A lot of feud historians graze lightly over this feud. It is not that uncommon to see only one or two sentences to a short paragraph concerning this conflict. It took place sometime between the Amos Strong feud and the Hargis Cockrell feud, and many of the same people took part in all of the feuds, and we do have accounts of 40 to 50 men dying because of this particular conflict. Taking into account that the people involved were already hot-headed and still fuming over the cattle matter that happened with John Amos, it did not take long for the first few to morph into other conflicts. Come along with us as we walk through the second known feud of Bloody Breathitt County, as told by the newspaper reports of the time. All aboard the Kentucky-Tennessee Living Time Machine! Please fasten your seatbelts and keep your arms and legs inside of the vehicle at all times. But to get going, we need your help. We still need to fire up that time machine to transport us. Please help us by clicking on the like, subscribe, and bell notification buttons down below. Not only does this fire up the time machine, but it convinces YouTube that we need a bigger time machine to reach more people who love history as much as you do. Now, back to our story. The short story as told by many. As we have said in our opening statement, often this feud is relegated to a few sentences or paragraph. But, as we have often found in our researches, there is a treasure when you dig through the archives. Here is how it's often found. According to the book, Kentucky Famous Feuds and Tragedies, quote, A few years after the termination of this feud, another started, under the name of Strong Callahan Feud. Some of the members of the factions in the Strong Amos Feud also participated in this one. In this war, Captain Bill Strong headed his faction. Wilson Callahan, the father of Ed Callahan, who figures prominently in the Hargis Cockrell feud, commanded the opposing forces. A number of men were killed off before Wilson Callahan's death by assassination put an end to it. Unquote. This is what the website Bloody Breath at Kentucky, The Feuds and Wars, had to say about the feud. Quote, a few years after the termination of this feud, it broke out again, under a different name. This time it was known as the Strong-Callahan Feud. Captain Bill Strong, being the head of one faction, and Wilson Callahan, the father of Sheriff Ed Callahan, being the leader of the other side. Several men were killed on both sides of the Strong-Callahan Feud. Callahan was shot from ambush and killed and his death practically ended the feud." Unquote. So we can kind of gather from these two sources that the feud was an extension of the Amos Strong feud. But were there other reasons? Let's go through a few of them, shall we? Reasons behind the feud. There can be several reasons behind each feud. And with some feuds, like the Hatfields and McCoys, the reasons a feud may actually start may be highly disputed. With the Strong Callahan feud, it is not really clear how this started, but we will give each of the reasons from the sources. According to the Sun and the Times, quote, The enmity between the Strongs and the Callahans grew out of the killing of Callahan's uncle by Strong. The feud which sprang up became so bitter between the two families in consequence, that every man in the country surrounding Crockettsville for some miles was drawn into it, and announced whether he acknowledged allegiance to the Callahan or to the strong faction, unquote. According to the Weekly Intelligencer, quote, After Amos left, the captain enjoyed an era of peace. When the Ku Klux began writing, nearly 20 years ago, the captain was bitterly denunciatory of them, and their methods. He accused Ed Callahan and his friends with leading the Ku Klux, and it was not long until the strong Callahan feud was well underway, with the result that three men were killed." Unquote. Amos was of course John Amos from the Amos Strong feud, which we have finished a previous video discussing the feud between the two men. Callahan and his men denied these charges against them by Strong and his faction and considered it a deep insult to be accused of such a thing. 
To be accused of being part of the Ku Klux Klan back then, as in today, was a heavy insult. During this time period, it wasn't just about racism and kicking out the northern carpetbaggers who wanted to take a stake in the land that previously belonged to a family that supported the southern cause in the Civil War. It was also used as a method to coerce people into selling their mineral rights to the coal company agents. These agents were paying pennies for these rights. Many people agreed to this because they misunderstood that they would be removed from their land for the coal companies to gain the coal that was there. They never imagined that these companies had a way of mining to gain access to this mineral. A lot of these people thought that this was a huge farce and free money. Fight over John Amos As previously discussed in our Amos Strong video, there was now animosity between Strong and William Callahan. Even though Callahan had warned Strong and his men that Amos and his factions were coming to kill them, he still was accused of treachery. This was due to the fact that the overall plan was for Amos to be shot by Strong and Callahan. However, Callahan shot his gun before Strong could take aim on Amos. Callahan was accused of treachery for this act. We will leave it to you, our viewer, to decide which of these reasons was the catalyst for starting this feud. In our humble opinion, it was a combination of all of them. Shaking of Hands Strong and Callahan would be involved in one way or another way in the feuds that existed in Breathitt County at the time. They never fought on the same side and were always gunning for each other. There came a time, however, when this would change. Apparently, after the death of so many men and many years of strife between the two factions, the two leaders decided to come to a peace accord. The two men met in the office of Judge Day in Breathitt County and shook hands and declared that the feud had ended. Now the question is asked, was this decision too little too late? As their men did not adhere to this agreement, this would lead to an attempt on Callahan's life after the death of Strong. Callahan would not escape his assassins, though. He tried as hard as he could, but he would also meet a grisly fate. The Death of Captain William Bill Strong According to the Tennis Gazette, quote, Captain William Strong was killed near Jackson, Kentucky, Sunday. He was shot seven times from ambush. He was a leader in the Strong Callahan feud in Breathitt County, settlement of which was agreed upon in the county court three or four weeks ago. It is not known who did the killing. The feuds with which Captain Strong had been identified have cost more than 50 lives in the county. Strong was 72 years old and a captain in the Federal Army. According to the Find a Grave website, quote, it is told that Strong and his men made widows of over 100 women throughout the years. Thus, he had many enemies, and it came as little surprise that some of them paid a call of revenge to his section of the county on a lovely day in May of 1897. Once again, as it often had been done, his name leaped into the headlines of the nation's newspapers. This time, however... The old chieftain's story was an ending. He had met death in the same manner in which he had, no doubt, dealt it out so many times over the years. The place selected by the assassins was one which seemed to have been designated by nature as a suitable place for such a work. In the narrow valley of a little mountain streamlet, a number of large rock shads slipped down in the course of time from the adjacent cliffs until they had settled down within only a few feet of the roadway. It was from behind these huge boulders that the first shots were fired, and it was up the path left by them long years ago that the murderers made their desperate escape into the country, so rugged and wild that a hasty pursuit was practically impossible. Captain Bill was buried near the spot he fell. Today, his old Civil War tombstone is all but unreadable, as it stands on a lovely hilltop amid other old graves. As was the case in many of the ambush killings of feuding days, the names of the killers were known by many. Yet nobody was ever charged or convicted of Strong's murder. Unquote. 
attempted assassination of Callahan. According to the Cincinnati Daily Star, a fake assassination attempt was made on the life of Callahan by Strong's widow. Quote, a fake assassination. Duff fired several shots and the report went out that Callahan was killed. Jackson, Kentucky, December 18th. The report circulated here several days ago that Ed Callahan, ex-chairman of the Democrat County Committee and leader of the Klan, which exterminated Captain Bill Strong, chief of the Red Strings, last May, was assassinated as untrue. Callahan is alive and well. On Monday, Isom Begley, a friend of Callahan, came to him and said that Ned Duff had offered him $500 to assassinate Callahan, that Captain Bill Strong's widow had employed Duff to hire Callahan's guild. Bagley pretended to fall in with Duff's plan. Callahan told Bagley to make the appointment with Duff to do the killing the next day, to have Duff remain down the road within hearing distance, and to come near Callahan's door and fire off his gun several times, and then return to Duff and claim the reward. The plan was carried out to the letter. Duff thought Callahan had been killed when he heard Begley's shots and promised to pay him the money two days later in Jackson. After Bagley left Duff with this understanding, he went back to Callahan, who notified the sheriff of Perry County, and Duff was arrested and placed in jail at Hazard. Callahan says he will swear out a warrant also against Mrs. Strong, charging her with conspiring to murder him, unquote. The name of Strong's widow who is mentioned in this article was Eliza Hargis Strong. Callahan had either changed his mind about the charges or they were immediately dropped as we could not find a court date for her or anything about a possible arrest in this case. And perhaps this incident was overlooked because of her grief for Captain Bill Strong. However, this did make Callahan aware that he did have a target on his back, so to speak. He understood that there were many that were not willing to let bygones be bygones in this matter. Even though Callahan and Strong both had made their peace before a judge and declared a ceasefire. The Death of Edward Callahan According to the Sun, quote, Edward Callahan was assassinated two days ago at his home near Crockettsville, a little village 20 miles from here. He was shot in his own house while asleep in bed. His murderers are not known, but believed to have been members of a faction formerly led by Captain William Strong, with whom Callahan's family had had a feud for many years, during the progress of which there had been more than a dozen murders and scores or more of shooting a phrase, unquote. In the same article, we are told that Callahan was a country merchant, farmer, distiller of brandy, a postmaster, and a Democrat politician. He was also described as having accumulated considerable wealth. However, he did fear for his life, and he never went far from his house, which was 40 yards away from his store, or anywhere else without an armed guard of at least four men. Each of these men are described as being experts with rifle and pistol shots. Callahan himself went around armed wherever he went. It is also said that he kept both the doors to his house and to his bedroom shut and a lamp on for the fear of assassination was upon him. His guard of four men also rotated shifts throughout the night so that he was always guarded. Callahan took these precautions with the hope that when the assassin did come for him that he would at least have a chance of a fair fight. This apparently did not happen as he was shot to death in his bed. Even though Strong was involved in two of the first feuds in Breathitt County, and we have covered his death in the second one, believe it or not, he was actually involved in more feuds than these two. Our next look at Strong will be his involvement next week in the feud between the two factions named Jet and Little. Thank you. We at Kentucky, Tennessee Living would like to thank you for watching our video series on the Appalachian Feuds. Don't forget to hit that like button as the more likes we receive, the more likely YouTube is to suggest our videos to other viewers. Also, to receive notice when we upload a new video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell notification. We thank you for continuing to support Kentucky Tennessee Living as we are discovering the mysteries of Appalachian history.